is going through this pandemic right now. This is not something that's unique to you or you or you. It's unique to all of us. And so therefore, when I started to put this together and I started to think about it, what struck me about this entire situation was that we are in a situation that all of us have to deal with and we have to come up with some new ways of working. The COVID-19 has changed the world. It changed the way we sell. We can't meet in person. You can't meet in person. And if you do, you meet with a mask and this ridiculous thing, and that's not producing the kind of nonverbal communication that we need. We're going to talk about that later. You cannot demonstrate a product and its feature. You can't go to somebody's office and sit down with them and demonstrate how it works. I deal with somebody who needs to demonstrate a product and he tries to do that virtually and never quite does it. He says, well, you know, they didn't quite get it. Even though it, it's simple, they don't quite get it. You can't canvas, that is, you can't go from place to places. I've taught you, if you've been with me, you know that I believe that it's very important that when you go see somebody, that is, you meet somebody in an office, what you do is you go out of the office after the appointment, and you go to the right, the left, and in back of you, and you go to three other places and knock on the doors and say, hey, this is what I do when I was over here doing it. Well, you can't do that anymore, because they're not going to let you in. There's little chance to create the rapport that you need as a salesperson. You no longer can have that handshake. You no longer can have that grip. You can't do that anymore. So that prevents us from creating the rapport. There is no nonverbal communication, which makes up 65% of the way we communicate. Face, lips, smile, frown, shrug. And there is no need for a company to change vendors. Now, this is, I want you to listen to this. There is no need for vendor, for buyers to change their vendors because they're not buying enough. In other words, you're going after new, new business. But the vendor, the buyer says, I, I don't need to change now. What do I need to change for? And they're not changing as a result of that. So it's even more difficult, even more difficult to get a sale to make it happen. For the past 40 years, believe it or not, it's 40 years. For the past 40 years, I've been working with sales forces throughout the world. I've spoken to 500,000 salespeople, 9,000 companies in 43 different countries. I've written 70 books, and you know, many of you know those books. But our major goal has only one purpose, only one purpose today, to help you recover some of the laws, to help you get sales. That's the only thing I've ever thought about, and that's what I want to help you do today. So I want you to give, you, give some thought to this. Now, there is no notebook, so if you want to take notes, please take notes. If you want to get this program, you can do that, and I'll tell you about that later. There are five major skills that we're going to examine today. Number one, how to prospect. It's a different world. You can't prospect by Zoom. You can't go Zoom and somebody show up. That's not the way it works. You've got to call, but then you've got to set up a meeting that's virtual and many people don't want to do that. What does a sale look like? What's the structure of the sale? Yes, it's the same structure as I could tell you before, but it's not because there isn't that communication. How do you handle the objections? Are they the same or are you getting new objections? Like, yeah, okay, uh, call me back on Zoom next month, next year, but you can't because they don't have to pick it up. See, that's the difference. Managing a pipeline as a predictor and indicator of your success. And I have a feeling that pipelines are becoming weak, that we don't have what we need in that pipeline to give you the business you need two, three, four, five months from now. It's going to, it's going to fall apart. The pipeline that's established today will not be there in a few weeks, only because people are going to buy out and they're gonna move on. Or, and this is statistically correct, 50% of the nation's small businesses will be out of business. That's gonna affect you. That's gonna affect what you do or how you do it. 50% are out of business. You can't even call them. They won't be there. In the restaurant industry, it's almost 60%. So you have to give some thought to that. And finally, most important thing is how do you as a salesperson, now listen, because you know I talk about this all the time, how do you as a salesperson differentiate yourself from everybody else? Because you're all the same. Now we're on television. 
we're virtual. We're not there. We can't differentiate ourselves. How do we separate ourselves from everybody else? And if you cannot do that, you become a commodity. And once you become a commodity, it doesn't matter what you have to say other than price. But that's a commodity. And you don't want to be selling off a of price. Your skills look like this. 25% of your success is in prospecting. 20% of your success is from, your, from making a presentation, which is more difficult today than it ever was. 20% of your success is in product knowledge or product malleability, understanding how your product works for them, not for you. I know you know your product. I know you know your product. You know your product backwards, forwards, upside down. But that doesn't matter. It's how it's adapted to what they do. Because that's what's important. It's not what you do. It's what they do. And the rest, 15%, is professional and personal development. However, when you look at it, 65% of your success as a salesperson is simply finding people and telling them what we do. But that's the difficulty today. We can't just walk the streets. We can't just do that. It's changed. The world is changing. The true deficit of sales is not based on pain. I still, to this day, have people saying to me, well, Steve, I have to find out what their pain is. There is no pain. It's not based on finding a solution because there's no problem. It's not waiting for them to guess what you sell. Selling is really asking people what they do, how they do it, when they do it, who they do it with why they're doing it that way. And then your job, and only then is your job, is to help them do it better. Listen again, just listen. The true definition of selling is not pain and not solutions, but asking people what they do, how they do it, when they do it, where they do it, who they do it with, why they've chosen to do it that way. And then your job is to help them do it better. If you can't go in and talk to somebody about helping them do what they do better, you're not going to make the sale. I don't care what you sell. You're going to make the sale. If you're saying to me, your product is like everybody else's product, you're not going to make the sale. Your objective has to be to help, help people do what they do better. But here's the issue. And COVID is the issue. The issue is you've got to really have a discussion. You've got to have a discussion that's sometimes difficult to have now because over virtual Zoom, using that, it's not as easy as it was before. You know, I can create a conversation with virtually anybody, and most of you I've met. So I can create a conversation. I can say, what do you do? Tell me about it. How did it start? But Zoom, there's a restriction to that. So you're going to have to say to yourself, Maybe I need to take a little bit more time. Maybe I have to set up that second meeting very quickly. Because if I don't, I'm not going to get to that second meeting. When calling, you don't get through. Always, and you don't get through, always leave a short message. Here are tips. This is tips for prospecting. When you call, don't leave. Don't leave a long message. I was working with somebody the other day. I was coaching. And I said to him, what do you leave as your message? Oh, I leave everything. And he does, literally. He tells, he, tells, he tells the story of his company, how they started, what they do, how they do it, when they do it, where they do it. He tells everything. He tells his story. I said, Bill, do you think they listen? Oh, no, they probably don't. So then why are you doing that? Well, the phone is there and the voicemail didn't cut me off. No, it's all wrong. The only objective in leaving a message is to get somebody to call you back. Short message to the point with your telephone number twice. Short message to the point, telephone number twice. That's it. That's it. Don't go any further. Don't leave the story. Your story, you'll have, an, you'll have an opportunity to tell your story another time, but don't do it on the phone. Don't sell over the phone. Don't sell over the phone in that case in a message. If you need to sell on the phone, which you do now, and you're going to have to learn how to do that, then what are the key elements that you can talk about to the person that you're speaking to 
about what separates you from the other guy. After all, you call that company because they use your product. Here, follow. Follow. If you sell paper, I'm using that as example, or copiers, it's a big example. You call people that buy copiers. You call people that buy paper. You don't call people that don't buy paper. Would you call someone who doesn't buy your product? Of course not. You call the people who use and buy your product. That's how you got their name. So if you're selling computers, you call people who use computers. If you sell cars, you call people who use cars. I mean, you call people who are obvious in what they do. You don't call people who don't do it. So therefore, when you sell on the phone, you've got to be careful. You've got to make sure that what you're doing is giving an explanation of why they should work with you because you know already they have your product. They have to have it. They're in business. And if they use paper, they've got paper. They've got copiers. They've got everything that you want to sell to. So you have to rethink that. <clears throat> you have to think what it is you're offering them. The only reason you're calling and prospecting is to set an appointment. Now, in this case, what we're looking to do is set up a virtual appointment. Now, I believe in not now, but in two months from now, people will start to understand that's it. There's no other way. We're going to have virtual appointments. So then start saying that. I want to set up an appointment on Zoom, if that's what you're using. Say it. Say it. And then send the invite out. By the way, if you leave a message, short message, and you didn't get through, send an invite anyway. You have nothing to lose. They'll cancel out, or they may accept it. You've got a chance for them to accept it, but most people don't do it. Most people don't send the invite out because they figure, well, he won't respond. Well, you know what? You're right. Don't send it. He won't respond. You're absolutely right. If you do not send out an invite, no one's going to respond. Use tools to find people. Now, here's the danger, and I hear this all the time. I use Google to research the company, to find the right person. And I say to them, how long does it take you? Oh, about three hours. So you're working on Google for three hours to find a person. Oh, yeah. Really? Just call the company. What's the big deal? Get a number and call. Well, I want to get the right person. No, you're not going to get the right person. And let me tell you something about the right person. The right person isn't. Wow, well, I know. That makes no sense, does it? The right person isn't. That makes no sense. But listen to me. Every single decision maker on the face of the earth talks to somebody else about what they should do. Everybody does. And it's called the power of 12. Everybody talks to at least 12 people about what they should do. Think about when you bought your car, house or car. When you bought your house, you brought over your mother-in-law, you brought over your father, you brought over all those people to look at the house. What do you think? And it gave you the picture. So we get anywhere from 10 to 12 people to actually make a decision for us. So when you're talking to the executive, to the decision maker, it doesn't mean that they're the only person. Aim high for the number of calls and meetings that you want. Develop a script that includes the rebuttals and the objections that you know are going to happen. You know you're going to get certain objections. I never understand why you don't know how to turn around the objection when they say, I'm not interested. I don't want it. Call me back in 16 years. I don't know. Why do we not? No, I had to turn that around. Make sure you leave your name and telephone number and print a call and don't assume they will not call you back. And smile. Wow, that sounds so ridiculous. Uh, smile when you make your calls. Does you sound better because the muscles here affect the larynx and therefore you sound better. Salespeople try too hard to close. This is not the time during this crisis to push somebody to buy. It is not the time to do it. You push somebody too hard, they're going to back off because they are in a very difficult situation. I don't want to use an example of, of, of a laboratory 
but if you took a little animal and you put them and you pushed them and pushed them and pushed them, you know what's going to happen. It's going to fight. Well, that's what happens today. People that are in business trying to survive, and there's so many people trying to survive, don't want to be pushed. The sale is a logical conclusion of the discussion that you and the prospect have had. It makes sense. Listen, it makes sense to do business together. If you can't say that, you don't have a deal. Just like you don't really have a good customer if you can't say, Mr. Customer, this is what I think we should do next. This is what I think we should do next. If you can't say that to your existing customers, they're not good customers. You may think they are, but you have to be able to say that to somebody. You have to be able to be honest with them and say, this is what I think we should do next. See the reaction. Who's your number one competitor? I'll give you a second to think about that. But you know the answer. It is the status quo. It's what they're doing now. And they're going to continue to do that. There's no need to change. Why should they change? Especially during this period of time. So you have to be more diligent in using things to explain what you do. For example, how many of you use the mail? We don't use the mail. When I started business a long time ago, 1800s, I used the mail. I used to use the mail. We did mailings. We mail stuff out. Well, go back to that, not 1800s. Go back to that. Use Federal Express. Use UPS. Use the post office. Use mailings. It's a way to start conversations again. You've got to start thinking about that. But don't do what I notice is in LinkedIn, where every LinkedIn message I'm getting is, do you want to buy? Well, what? What? Yeah, I guess they said that enough times. But start thinking about other ways to make that sale. Things that you haven't done because you didn't need to do it. Because the computer did it. Because you could send out something. Start using the most basic things. When you get a letter, which nobody gets anymore, you tend to open it. Think about it. You tend to open the letter. There's only one objective to every sales meeting, no matter who you are, no matter where you are, and that's get to the next step. That's all it is. When you go on a sales call, the only thing you should be thinking about is, am I getting to the next step? If I'm not getting to the next step, then I don't have anyone. I don't have anything. What I'm trying to do is get to the next step. The next step qualifies my meeting. It tells me that the meeting went well. But you will go on a sales call, and I'm not putting it down. Believe me, I'm not. You know I'm not. You know I believe in selling, and you know I believe in salespeople and in you. But if you say to me, I went on a sales call today, and it was great, and I say to you, so when are you going back? And you say, I'm not. It wasn't great. It wasn't great. For whatever reason, it wasn't great. The objective of the first step is to get to the second step. The objective of the second step is to get to the third step. And you combine the steps and the time and you can start to predict when you're going to make sales. Now, here's my question. And it's a real question. It's a real question that requires you to think this out. Do you have enough things in your pipeline right now that you're going to be able to support yourself for the next three months? And you know it. You know better than I do. I can't tell you. But you know it. You know what you have. Do you have enough meetings scheduled? Scheduled, not just conversation, not just, yeah, I'll call you back in six months. I'm talking about do you have enough meetings scheduled that those meetings will turn into sales and those sales will give you enough income for the next three months because you are working right now into September, October, depending on your sales cycle. And you can predict through your pipeline, through your prospecting, what's gonna happen. You have no first appointments now, you have nothing three months from today, if that's your sales cycle. Now, if that scares you, that gets you upset, if that worries you and you go, oh, wait, 
Oh, is he to say that? It's just me. It's just me. I'm just saying it. I'm not saying it to beat you up. I'm just saying, tell you the truth. That's what's going to happen. Your pipeline is the most important tool that you have. It allows you to predict and is an indicator of your success. If they don't like the way I set that up, there are two factors, time and steps. As a sales meeting, should only, in a sales meeting should have only one key result. You have gotten to the next step. Do you like this? You see how I did? Look at this. I did this orange thing here. I can never do this stuff. You realize, if you know me at all, this is amazing. I pulled this off. But your pipeline is the most important tool you have. It's everything. It's everything. I, I worked with a guy years ago, older guy. What he did was he kept a piece of paper. And he knew so long as he had one and a half sheets, so it's one page and another half of prospects, he was going to be okay. He knew that. He just knew that number. And he always did it. Cross one out, put something in. You've got to think the same way. Your pipeline is the most important tool. I'm not telling you anything you don't know, but if it reinforces what we're talking about, that is important. It allows you to predict as an indicator. However, in order to predict and indicate what you have, you have to have a really solid criteria for each one of the prospects you put in. Here's what you do, and you know you do it. Oh, I've got a good meeting. You put it in there. Don't get to the next step. Yeah, but you see, Steve, they really want to buy from me. Oh, okay. So it's 90%. No, it isn't. It isn't. You've got to go through the steps. There are steps that you go through. And if you don't go through the steps, you're not going to be there. And I don't want you fooled come Thanksgiving for us in the States or Christmas. I don't want you fooled. Don't do that to yourself. Forget first appointments. Forget them. Get virtual meetings. Start talking about that. Start talking to everybody about, hey, let's get together on Zoom. Let's get together on Zoom. Let's get together on Zoom. Start saying that. In this environment, we need to discuss with buyers their potential for your product. Agree? We need to reach out to existing buyers now. Existing buyers now. Those are the ones that are going to stay with you. Other people are trying to get that business. Hello, other people are trying to get that business. You need to be there first. And if you did that in the beginning of the crisis, you went there way back in March and you haven't been there since, you're making a mistake. You need to be in front of your existing buyers now. You've got to tell them you're here. You got to tell them they're here and you got to tell them 10 times because they will go someplace else and you will not have business. While they may be loyal to you, other people are right on your tail trying to get it. Typically, a seller has a 20% chance of getting new business from a new company. That's you. But that's going to drop. You're going to have to double your effort in order to contact potential buyers. You need to know your ratios. I track everything you do. Track your time. Know where you've been and what you've done, and can you manage that time, or are you managing that time? Too many people I deal with don't manage their time. Ask yourself now how many second meetings you have scheduled. I could wait. Do you have second meetings? Because the second meetings that you have scheduled will determine your success. No second meetings, no matter what you tell me, ain't going to happen just isn't. I want it to happen to you. I really do. I wouldn't do this program if I didn't want it to happen to you. There's no charge. I want it to happen to you. But you've got to make it happen. You're the only one that can. In the sale, number one, you've got to be more assertive than you've ever been before. Now, I'm not saying aggressive. I'm not saying aggressive. But you've got to be more assertive. You've got to say, here's my plan. Here's when we want to get together, you've got to say it. You've got to listen more carefully to why they're buying from the other vendor. You gotta ask that question. Remember the definition of selling, asking people what they do, how they do it, when they do it, where they do it, who they do it with, why they're doing it that way, and then our job is to help them do better. You gotta know why they're buying from the other vendor and find out the length of relationship with the vendor so you know what you're dealing with. Now this, I put this here for a reason. 
Because that word okay, I don't want you to ever use the word okay. Ever. Ever. Ever use the word okay. When somebody says to you, look, I'm really busy, you got to call me back. And you go, okay, that's the end of the conversation. Gee, you call me back in six weeks. Uh, okay, that's the end of the conversation. Well, you know, we're going to figure about it. Oh, okay, that's the end of the conversation. The word okay kills all conversations. Don't use it. Get it out of your vocabulary. Never use the word okay. Once you say to somebody, okay, it's over. Don't use the word. This is the most important thought I can give you. Because I hear it all the time. Can we get together next week? Or can we do a Zoom thing next week? Well, I'm kind of busy. Oh, okay. Hang up. Okay? Who? Where did that come from? Who taught you that to say that? Okay shouldn't exist in the world of sales. Now, I talked about this. The power of 12. Here's your buyer. Here's your advisor. Here's your advisor. Here's your other advisor. And there's the buyer. It goes around. You don't think this happens? Do you really think that an executive or decision maker, whatever you want to call it, of any company just makes a billion dollar decision without talking to somebody else? Do you really think that? You don't. Why do you think they're different? You think somebody who runs a multi-million dollar or even a million dollar or even just a hundred thousand dollar company doesn't ask somebody, hey, what do you think? Of course they do. So, but here's the issue. You don't know who those people are. So you get blindsided. You get blindsided because they say no. I remember years ago, I was on a big deal. I had a million dollar project with United Airlines. I can actually tell you the story. And I'm standing there, we're doing, we're actually doing a presentation, we're, we're wrapping it up, we got the deal, everything's coming together. And some guy from IT or whatever walks in and says, what are you doing? And they told him, and he said, no, we're not going to do that. And the whole thing just ended. I don't know where he came from. I don't know where he went. But he killed it. Hey, you don't know that. So you got to know the person. You really got to understand the company you're dealing with. Your job is to help them do what they do better. Therefore, you have to understand what they really do. Don't make assumptions. When you're in a virtual conversation, you tend to make assumptions. Well, they must do this. Or they must do that. No, don't do that. Find out. Ask questions they ha that have value to them and to you. And why are you asking those questions? And don't push the close. It'll happen. The close will happen if, in fact, it's meant to, if, in fact, you're doing the right thing. Closing the sale. There are four elements. Write this. If you haven't taken a note, then I would urge you to write these four things down. Now, you see over here my little guy, little head there with his little thing in his head. Let me tell you why that's there. Because I can put it there. That's it. I could get that little guy there. That's the only thing. I'm only good at one thing. I can get that little guy there. I don't know why, but I can actually get him in this slide. So that's the only reason. I want to tell you, it has no purpose. It doesn't mean anything. Oh, it looks pretty good. But I can get that little guy in this slide, and so I put him right there. That's it. It's not the whole thing. Okay, four elements to closing a sale. Ready? you got to be talking to the right person. But remember, we just talked about the right person, maybe 12 others. We've got to be talking to the right person about the right price, their right price. We've got to talk to the right person about the right price, about the right product. What's right for them? Yeah, you want to sell something, but is it right for them? And finally, it's got to be the right time. So there are four elements, the right person, the right price, the right product, and the right time. And if any one of these things are missing, it doesn't work. I can tell you from experience that when you look at somebody's proposal, the reason it doesn't close is because one of those elements is missing or is wrong. You came up with this product. You said, this is the one. It's wrong for them. You came up with this price. It's not for them. You came up with this timetable. It's not for them. And you think you're talking to the right person when it isn't. It's in there someplace. I can guarantee you every sale, every single.
So we understand that. We know that. Objections. Almost done. I want to tell you now that objections, where they enter into the sale, creates the validity of the sales process. But you treat them the same. Sometimes objections are just a question. And you fail to hear it that way. So you go into this whole story. Are you prepared for the objections? And what are the objections that you hear? Objections enter into the sales process deliberately. There's a reason somebody says, I'm not interested in the beginning. Very different when they say, I'm not interested at the end. You and the other guy. This is perhaps the most important thing for all of you, for every person here today, for every person who has done the honor of joining me, this one issue, this one slide, slide 22, is the most important. You and the other guy, you and the other person, you and the other woman. How do you separate yourself out? I travel all over the world. I've been in 43 different countries. I've given speeches to nearly 9,000 organizations. And when I say to somebody, to a company, to a group, so what separates you out from the other guy? What separates you out from the other woman? What separates you out from the other person selling a similar product? Here's the number one answer, service. Oh, service. We give great service. We're a lousy company, but we give great service. We're there. Well, you need us. We're there. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We're there. That's what they all tell me. I get that all the time. Every place. But because I get it from everybody all the time, it doesn't matter. It's the same as getting anything else. You have to say to yourself, it's not just service, because that's relevant now. People got numb to that. It's because you help people do what they do better. In order to make a sale, you must be able to illustrate what you are suggesting will help the prospect do what they do better. And if you don't know the answer to that, the sale will not happen. And in this world right now, where we live right now, in this ridiculous world of illness, you know, it's almost like we're in a movie. We're wearing masks. I have a mask I could put on. We're, we're wearing masks. Our kids are wearing masks. They're not going to school. We are in a movie. And you have to be able to illustrate more than ever before the difference between you and the other company and the other sale. Here we go. Handle the objections and be prepared. You should be. I never understood how you cannot know what they're going to say. Sometimes what sounds like an objection is just a question. Just answer the question. No one to stop speaking and listen. No one to stop speaking and listen. Don't always try to close every time. Time can be on your side. Eventually, they're going to run out of product. And if you know that, if you know the timing of that, you have a chance. Do you really know about the person that you're meeting? What do you know? Do you actually ask? Most of you will tell me you're afraid to say it. Oh, you say that to me. Well, no, I can't ask that question. Well, I do. Why? Well, I can't ask how many kids they have. Why? Where do they live? Why not? You want to know, don't you? Don't you want to know something about the person you're dealing with? Are they that different than you? Especially at this time. Especially at this time. And we all are in the same predicament. COVID-19 is an unfortunate equalizer. Listen to that. It's an equalizer. If nothing else, it's an equalizer. It has put us all in the same boat it is equal. It has made us equal. Every one of us is the same now. We all have the same problems. What do we do with the kids? What do we, how do we work? We're working at home. We're working here. Gee, am I going to get sick? Everybody's in the same place. So now we're on the same footing. Not good, but we're on the same footing. And I don't hear anything that says, hey, this is going to go away real fast. I want to do this last piece for you. It's so reinventing yourself. I believe that it is crucial 
And if you're with me, if you've ever been with me before, you know, you know, I believe this. I've reinvented myself about six times. And you need to think about that. So here are some things to do. Reinvent yourself. You don't have to be the same person. You have this opportunity. As weird as this is right now, you have an opportunity to be different. Number one, physical and anxiety. Get physical and reduce the anxiety. That stops us. When you're anxious, you don't sell well. That stops us. Get more sleep. Get more sleep. I'm not saying because we're not going out anymore, we can sleep more, but I am saying get some more sleep. Drink more water. It actually does help. Now, this is a contradiction. See, it's going to contradict. You're going to go, ah, it's a contradiction. I said, get more sleep, but I'm going to say, get up 15 minutes earlier each day. I know, that seems like such a contradiction, but it really isn't. If you get up 15 minutes earlier each day, you will be more wide awake, more better functioning, more excited than you are the other way. When you just get up right at that moment, you got to get up. It doesn't work. But when you get up, 15 minutes a day and give yourself that time to get into the day. You're not much better. Get rid of needy people in your life. Just get away from them. You don't need it. You don't need somebody who calls you every day and says, oh, brother, I don't want it. I don't want to hear it. You don't want to hear it and you don't need it. Stop reading negative news. If there's a war, you will know buy some new clothing and wear it. The other day I was giving a speech and I said to the, to, 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 to the participants, I said, how many of you are still wearing clothes from college when they raised their hands? I said, really? How many have name tags in your clothes when you went to camp? And they went, yeah, get rid of that stuff. Buy something new. Feel good about yourself. Laugh out loud once a day. Just laugh out loud. You see, it's funny. You just laugh, just laugh for no reason. You don't have to find anybody. Go to a tree. I don't care. Be open-minded. Anything is possible, and it is possible, and you have, in fact, done the impossible before. Have a difficulty changing? Here's why. And Tommy, I'll get to your end question in a second. Security? You're worried about it. I know you're worried. If you weren't worried about security in this age, in this age, I would worry about it. Uncertainty, not knowing what's really gonna happen. Do you know? I don't. The world could blow up tomorrow. It isn't, but it could. And you wanna believe that, I guess you could go find somebody else who would believe it too with you. The two of you can sit in the trees and say, oh, the world's gonna be good end. And if you believe that, you know what? Stop now. Self-doubt. Self-doubt. Don't believe in what you're doing. You just don't. And finally, the last thing that stops almost everybody. Habits. The habits that we have. You and I have certain habits that we constantly work with. It takes 21 days to make or break a habit. We do the same thing over and over and over and over again. And if you don't believe me, next time you get up, and you get dressed, look at how you did it. You did the same uh, process every time. Look at how you brush your teeth. You'll see you brush your teeth the same way every day. You'll see it. So habits are difficult sometimes to break. I got a couple questions that I want to do. So Lee says to me, oh, I got California. How should you handle a person that I'm not really interested? And you know they really need your service. First of all, you don't know they really need your service. You think they do. You think they do because they're buying it. The answer is you've got to convey to somebody that what they're doing is good, but that you can help them do it better. If you can't get that, and if they don't allow you to prove that out, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. You need to be able to say to somebody, I really believe I can help you do what you do better. So let's look at a couple of things that are frequently asked questions that I get. How do I call someone I don't know? Do you want to know the answer? Pick up the phone. Pick up the phone. Maybe you uh, mute yourself, please. Pick up the phone. 
just pick it up. The problem is you don't because you think it out too much. Let's go to Google and look it up and find out the right person. And you do that for three and a half hours and you have nothing. How do I handle objection? Not that difficult. What I say when somebody says to me, well, I'm not interested. I say, well, you know, Mr. Jones, other people told me the same thing before they had a chance to see the benefits. Now, what I'm looking to do is derail that conversation. I cannot let them continue on that track because I won't get past it. I can't say, you don't get it. I can't say that, but I can say other people said the same thing. What if I'm hung up on? I had a guy the other day, I was calling. I still do this, by the way. If you don't think I call, you know I call. So I had a guy, I'm calling him. It was a woman, actually. And she said to me, I don't want you to call me again. Oh, I thought, okay, that's easy. In fact, she said to me, you tell everybody never to call me again. I'm sitting around in my office, and there's only me. And I'm going, oh, I got to tell this to So I yelled out, don't call her again. I hung up. And I guess she feels better. What? What if I meet a nasty person? I do. I meet nasty people. Okay. I meet nasty people. Go find somebody nice. Go find somebody nice. There are nice people. And the last thing, which I've never really been asked, you, how did I learn all this? How did this all come about? Well, if you go back a number of years ago, long time ago, I decided that's what I was going to do. And I made cold calls all the time and I recorded them and I listened to them. And my wife and I sat there and listened to the calls over and over and over again until I figured out how to turn it around. You should do the same thing. You should sit and record your telephone calls. Sit and analyze your sales call and then say, you know, I know they're going to say this. So what's the answer? The answer is, do you know the answer? Most people don't. Most people don't know what they're going to say. Listen, you humble me by your appearance today, by your attendance. You have no idea how much important, how important it is. If you would like a free recording, and I give you a free book. I give you a book. I've written 70 books. I've got some left over. I give you a book. All you got to do is write sfrcchef.com. That's all. 32 bucks, and I'll send you the whole thing, your little package. It's nice. I'll put a bow on it if you want that. But I want you to, to call if you have a question. If you have a question. So, we're at the end. If we if yeah. have a question, we'd be glad to answer. Mari? Okay. Well, Steve, thank you very much. Um, everyone can unmute themselves if you do have any questions. Um, we're back to full screen. If you're in, in gallery view, you can see every well. You can see everyone close their cameras. Um, but does anyone have any questions right now? They want to ask Steve. Am I on mute? I'm not on mute. No. I don't know. I don't know. I don't. I'm just waiting. Sometimes people need a minute. They might be talking and not realize they're still muted. Um, well, Steve, you didn't. I'm looking to see if anything's in chat. Uh, Steve, there are some questions in the chat box. Um, question for Stephen. How would you handle when a person says, I'm not really interested, and you know they really need your service? You know, that's a great question because all of us believe everybody needs our service. Everybody, or else we wouldn't be in business. So we do believe that our service is valuable and that a company that ignores us and doesn't listen to us and doesn't listen to our story is foolish. That, that's kind of in our heads. But the reality is that everybody who needs our service will have somebody. They'll have somebody, somebody who is providing that service for them. The key is finding out how we can separate ourselves out to explain how we're different and how we're better. It's hard to do that because people don't always communicate. So the answer to that question, which is a roundabout way of saying it, you have to get to know the people you're talking to. 
you have to really start to understand. Now, in COVID, the problem is that we're working through a, another medium. We're not face-to-face. -face. It has advantages. One, you can ask some questions because everybody's in the same position. But the second issue is you really need to know, and I can give you the definition, what they do and how they do it, help them do it better. Most of us ask questions such as, do you need it? It's the wrong question. They're not going to say they need it. They have it. But we've got to understand how we can help them do it better. Very good. And that was from Elise in Pennsylvania. So yep. thank you for your question. Um, Elise, uh, Nicole said you're an awesome speaker. So I thank you, Nicole, uh, for that comment. And um, this comes from R. Schenkel. Um, can you recommend one or more of your books that uh, address objections? Yes. I, I written, as you know, many of you know, I've written 70 books. And I, I'm, I'm never uh, shy about telling you that because I want you to get them when you can because they're good for you. The book that I recommend is Asking Questions, Winning Sales, number one, or Getting to Close. Getting to Close. That's a, it's, a, it's a fantastic book. It shows you how to use your prospecting wisely, how to ask the right questions. What do you need to know? It's just a great book. And where can they get that book, Steve? Uh, Amazon, you or Amazon, Amazon? Amazon, yeah, and Amazon, yeah, yeah. And that was getting too close, correct? Getting too close, right. right. Okay, and that was R. Schenkel, so make sure you made that note. Um, any other questions? Um, okay, Elise has another question in chat. Do you have any suggestions how to approach people through LinkedIn to begin conversations? Okay, let me tell you how not to do it first for everybody. What I'm noticing is, because I've been, you know, you, you watch this stuff. What I'm noticing is that people on LinkedIn are being very direct. They're going, I can help you. And they just, that's what they say. It's like a direct mail and it's not going to work that way. What, what's got to happen is you've got to get somehow, some way of initiating a, a call with them based on your work with somebody else. So, for example, if I was cold calling somebody, or what I could, what I say is the reason I'm calling you today specifically, I completed work with uh, Chase Bank. Very successful, I like to tell you about it. I don't say that I can help you. I tell you that I've worked with somebody else first. Then it then carries over. So if I was, at least I might call up and say, listen, I'm working with this company. We've been very successful the last five years with them. What I like to do is just tell you what I did with them, not with you, because you haven't done anything with them what I've done with them. That's really the key. What have you done with them? Okay, that, that's a great answer. Um, thank you for that. And um, Neat says, I need, I hope I'm saying people's names right, so I do apologize with our international audience here. Oh, that's great, nice. yep, yep, yep. Yep, so Neat uh, says, great event. Thank you for your insight. Elise, uh, thanks you for uh, that great approach that you just offered. And Debbie, um, we have several members who could not attend today. Will the recording be available on your website? Um, Steve, do you want to make that available through the Chamber's website, or would you like to email it out to everyone directly? We can, we can email it out. We can take care of it. So we'll, we'll take care of it. Are you, okay, are you, and then they could share it with people yeah, if they she want. With, is she with um, um, Upsell? Um, Debbie, she'll, she'll yeah. where did Debbie go? Debbie's jumping all my, my chat is, yeah, my guess is she's with Upsell. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. Yeah, Debbie, if you could just let us know, um, could you say she cites members, so I'm thinking maybe one of the chambers. Um, more, um, okay, let's see. No trade shows. What's this one? As yeah, you know, I'm printing just, is going away. You're right. No, 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 work at home. no trade show proposals. We have done. Oh, Northern Poconos, Debbie was with. Yes, yeah, so she's Chamber of the Northern Poconos. So Debbie, um, I'll even get you a copy of that and you can post it if you want to your website or we do put all of the webinars up at scrittenchamber.com as well. We could share that link if you want to put it in your e-newsletter or something like that um, to go out post event because we do keep them in our news section. I just um, want to go to Sonia. She's saying, um, can you see that? Oh yeah, as you know, printing is going away right now since a lot of people are working from home. No trade show proposals, et cetera. We have done some COVID signage, but are starting to slow down. Any suggestions? This is gonna be what we're gonna face for a while. 
we've got to be more assertive of calling people up on a regular basis. Here's what I'm getting. When I ask people, and you know I actually ask this stuff, I'll get, I make three calls a day, four calls a day, five calls a day. That's never going to be enough. You've got to up the ante. You've got to say to yourself, you've got to call 20 people a day, every day. How you get those names is up to you. But if you're not doing massive effort, we're not going to get it. It will deplete itself. It will automatically deplete itself. And you're right about that. That's what's going to happen. Um, I would like to offer two cents on that, if that's okay, Steve, as well. In the printing industry, what we're experiencing um, and seeing a lot more of is reinventing where your service is possibly needed. During COVID, yes, everybody's been shut in and everything like that. Well, guess what? Signs have become a huge thing in yards. So I know that that has uh, become a little bit of a boom as well as signage for COVID for businesses. The chamber actually directly supported that. And I worked with very, various sign companies, but yard signs, whether it's dance, they're graduating from high school, they're graduating middle school, um, their teacher's proud of them, whatever it is, there's a lot of signage. So looking at different opportunities too, um, I would recommend that because we've just seen a lot of it and um, people are calling us for printing companies looking for those exact kind of different opportunities. So I would try that. And then we do have Tommy from Sweden. Um, I don't know if you saw this one, Steve. Your advice is that one call and ask for the right person. Is there not a risk that they are that they perceive this as you are not knowing? Oh, you don't have to call. No, no, no. Listen, what you do is you call. I got to tell you how to do this. You call somebody up, right? and they're going to answer. And you say, who's this? Whatever the name is. The reason I'm calling is to set an appointment with you. Just say it. I know, I know. You're all going, well, you can't do that. Say just calling to set a point with you. That is so weird that they will not be able to handle it. They will say, oh no, it's not me, it's them. And they will tell you who it is. So what you're doing is called a pattern interrupt. It's changing what they expect to happen because they're not asked to meet. Nobody ever calls and says to reception, can we meet? No one says that. You're going to say it. You say it, they're going to go, oh, it's not me. I can't meet with you, but Bill can. And all of a sudden, you're over there. At least you got the potential of the name. That's right, and it works. Um, we do have Elise uh, made another comment here, involved in a virtual event group. If Sonia is interested in finding out about virtual trade shows, maybe we could do something with the chamber and create a virtual trade show. I'd be very interested in learning more about that group, um, Elise. So if you can send me information directly, um, I will add my contact information right now into the chat. And uh, you can send me information on that virtual trade show because we are working on creating virtual events here at the chamber, more virtual events. I'm doing live in-person events, but uh, we're going to be doing virtual job fairs and stuff like that. So I'd love to hear about a trade show, how we can make that happen. Tommy, thank you, mentioned, thank you. Um, you're great, Steve. Uh, Sonia, also thank you. Any other comments, questions for Steve? We're approaching the one hour mark. All right, well, I think with that, um, again, thank you everyone um, for attending today. We will be sending an email, the chamber will be sending an email survey out to you. Just a, a minute of your time for some quick feedback. Um, but Steve, thank you so much. Always, always amazing. Always wonderful insight. Um, and remember to check Steve out. I think it's steveshipman.com, correct? Yes, 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 yes. And yes. your books are available everywhere. But if you have any questions, we'll make sure that um, you have more information on where you can learn more from Steve or how to hire him directly. And I want to thank you very much for joining me. Thank you to the chamber, but thank you for joining me. You humble me by your presence. Everyone have a wonderful day and stay safe. All right. Okay. Okay, there. I could just end it for everybody, right? <laughs>